All right, I want to start by giving all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to the elect out there. All right, I want to do a quick lesson about this video right here. Let's see. A quick lesson on this video. It says, survival of the richest billionaires build bunkers to prep for an apocalypse. And you see... That's scriptural because the scripture said the scriptures say that these elites, the rich of the world, are gonna hide themselves from the wrath of the Lord. You see, and before I play the video, I'm gonna get a quick scripture in Revelations. Let's see, Revelations. This is six. Revelation six. It says the sixth seal, which is terror, which is gonna be, you know. During the, the latter days, and this is a prophecy that had yet to be fulfilled, but it's going to be fulfilled soon. Revelation 6 and 12, it says, And behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. What's going to cause a great earthquake? The nuclear missiles. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. You see, it's going to be a very dark and destructive day. All right, verse 13, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when it is shaken of a mighty wind, you see? And that mighty wind is going to come by what? Those fig, those supposed figs, I mean those stars, Salakia, those stars, which are what? The nuclear missiles are going to fall, you know, down like, like leaves. It's going to be a lot of them. You see, and they're going to cause a mighty wind to stir up and go about and destroy a lot of the earth. Verse 14, it says, And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. What's going to call the mountain and islands to move out of their place? Nuclear fallout, which is going to happen during what? World War Three. That's why the scriptures say in nation in and they shall hate the whore and make her desolate and naked and eat her flesh. You see and how they're going to make her desolate and naked and eat her flesh by war, by those thermonuclear missiles. All right, verse 15, it says, and the kings of the earth and the rich and the great man and the rich man and the chief captains and the mighty man and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. You see? That's why they have those bunkers ready, because they know that the end is near and that Babylon, the great, is going to be judged. All right, verse 16, it says, And said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You see, Yahushua is coming back to bring the wrath of the Most High, you see. Verse 17, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? You see, so they're hiding, they're, they're creating bunkers in order to hide themselves. Because what? They know the scripture, they know what the scriptures say about, you know, what's going to happen, how it's going to be great tribulation. They know the tribulation is coming, and they know your house is coming back. I'm pretty sure they, they you can't tell me that they haven't heard. What you know, what what we preach out here, what the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites preach. You see, with those bunkers, they won't be able to save them. All right, let's uh, play the video. Tag Seth, co-host of Fox and Friends Weekend, is here <laughs> now. Pete, I, I think that some of these bunkers are bigger than the houses that you and I grew up in, but. You've mm -hmm. got a bunker, and that it doesn't surprise me to hear that. <laughs> what kind of bunker are you building out there? A very simple bunker, Brian. And I thank Griff for the shout out. I don't, I don't have billions of dollars to build a bunker. Bunker, like most people, not a lot of disposable income with lots of kids. So you do what you can. The house we bought came with like a cellar bunker, tornado shelter type thing. So we're trying to modify it to be prepared. But all I'm really trying to be prepared for, Brian is a grid down situation. I don't know if the zombie apocalypse is coming. I don't know if- Now look at that. You see that? That's 
that looks like it's being prepared for more than just a, a grid down situation. That looks like it's being prepared for uh, sedition among men and invading one another. But you know, that's Bible prophecy, see? They know, they feel it in their in their souls that that the end is gonna come, that this place is gonna fall, you see. Gulf War is coming, I don't know what's coming. All I know is that when the power goes out, whether you're in Tennessee or New York City, life changes. It, within 48 hours, the whole world's different. Within 96 hours, we can't even predict what the world would look like, mm. what our what our society would look like. Mm. So where are you going to get food? Where are you going to get water? Where are you going to get power? How are you going to get off the island of Manhattan if you want to get off? Or how are you going to go get to your family and friends? Do you have gasoline? Like, to me, it's more just a mindset of having the essentials for five, six, seven days. And then mm. if the grid's really down, well, then maybe only the billionaires survive at that point. Mm. It's funny, growing up, my grandparents had a bomb shelter, and it was really fun to play in it. I never knew that it would be like a serious thing that we'd actually be talking about, Pete. Um, on that note, I want to stick with this theme, but it was interesting that the CEO of that company said that they're seeing a little bit of an uptick as well in areas like Los Angeles, right, where it's a lot of crime that's increasing and people are focusing on security. Do you see that as sort of like another secondary business for these guys? Big time. Well, that's a huge secondary business, the idea of safe rooms uh, where you can go should you be. I mean, think about places where the rule of law barely exists. The police forces have been thinned out. The 911 reaction time is minutes, not, I mean, tens of minutes when it used to be a minute or two. What are you going to do if there's a home intruder? Mm. Uh, first, first of all, a lot of these places, you don't even have a Second Amendment right. By the way, I listed food, water, and everything else. You see, and these devils are preparing. They're preparing for what's, what's coming. But you have these, these uh, two-thirds out here. They, they, they have no idea. They only looking at, you know, what's, they only, care, they only care about what's happening currently. They're not preparing for the future. And the two-thirds out there, it's, it's in your story that you're not going to repent anyway, so you're going to be destroyed. You see, you're not going to be ready for what's coming. All roads lead to World War Three. It's one of the major prophecies. But the MOTB, the Mark of the Beast, is coming. You see, prophecy is rolling. Before that, you better have the ability to defend yourself, a firearm and ammunition, because mm -hmm. if things really go sideways, that's what you're going to need to protect yourself. But... <laughs> Yes, bunkers, safe rooms, weapons. Hey, hey, you, you, we, we can we, we can laugh about it, but if something changed, it's going to be the folks that are prepared that are ready to go. I, it's not a conspiracy. I think it's real life. Let's get to something a little more fun. It seems that President Trump is going to be doing a oh, fundraising. Is it is a little more fun. At least it'll be a party and not the apocalypse. <laughs> but he's going to be doing a, funding, a fundraising event in Palm Beach this weekend. He wants to try to raise $43 million in one night compared to that $26 million that Biden brought in, by the way, when he was flanked by former presidents Clinton and Obama on each side who really were more of the draw. But also, Charlie Gasparino reporting um, that billionaires like Ken Griffin, for example, might be donating to Trump as well. You want to see not only the... And you see, the Lord is going to be a shield to those that put their trust in him, which are going to be the elect. The elect are going to be safe. You see, those are the ones that are going to trust in the Lord. The Lord is going to feed them and take care of them. But you two-thirds out there, you're not prepared for what's coming. These devils, they're, they're trying to be prepared, but a lot of them, they're going to be destroyed. You're going to have some of these devils, these heathens, they're, they're going to be put in slavery. They're going to be put in chains. But the majority are going to be destroyed, you see. The grassroots side of this, but the big donors get behind him, Pete. Yeah, a billionaire bunker or give a hundred, uh, give a million dollars to Trump. A lot of people are deciding to give to Trump. I can see what happened here. The Joe Biden needed a lot of help from celebrities and former presidents to raise twenty five million, and Trump was like, "Nope, mine is gonna be bigger, and I'm gonna do it at home." Okay, we're gonna do it at my house. I don't even have to go to Radio City Music Hall; just my house. And so he's gonna do it at Mar-a-Lago. They're gonna raise almost twice as much. The billionaires are gonna make their way over to Trump, if, even if they didn't like him. Because the alternative is the chaos and the economy that we've seen under Biden, the assault mm -hmm. on industries like energy and on just the rule of law. So I think they'll come along. Mm -hmm. Fundraisers like that, that are a demonstration of that, in addition to the low dollar numbers that Trump raises, which he's better than anybody at.
He's got a bunker. He does impressions. Pete Hagsack. <laughs> that Thank was you, good sir. one. Yeah. Awesome yeah. stuff. You know it. All right, and I say this, you heathens, you better enjoy yourself now because what's coming for you when our lawyer house shot comes back is hardcore bondage. You are going in captivity and there's nothing you can do about it. All right, I'm going to end the lesson here. All right, Shalom.